Hey you guys, what's up? It's Pete Thorne. I'm in a hotel room just outside Washington, D.C. I'm looking outside my room right now at the beautiful Washington National Harbor. I'm on a tour stop right now with the band Five for Fighting. We're out on the road for a few weeks. Today's a day off. That gave me some time to edit some video. One of the videos I'm editing right now is from the Sweetwater Gear Fest that I attended a few weeks ago. The guys at Sweetwater were kind enough to give me some time in Studio A, their terrific recording studio there. And I decided what I wanted to do is make a video about guitar speaker cabinet microphones, commonly used microphones that you would use on guitar cabinets as well as maybe some not so common choices because there's a couple new microphones that I managed to get my hands on for this test that really knocked me out. I'm joined in this video by my friend Rhett Schull, who's just as geeky about microphones as I am, as well as the guys from the band Contortionist. What we decided to do is record a few different musical examples, a clean clip, a mid gain clip, and then a high gain clip, and then reamp all those clips through a guitar amplifier and speaker cabinet. And the only thing that's changing in these clips is the microphone on the guitar cabinet. So you should be able to get a really good idea of what all these different microphones sound like using a few different musical examples, all in the exact same position on the exact same cabinet. All right, without further ado, here we go. Guitar cabinet microphones at Sweetwater Gear Fest 2023. What's up, dude? We're at Gear Fest. We're at Gear Fest. Here 2023. we are. 2023. Yeah, Studio A. I, I had this idea of doing uh, in the studio here a guitar cabinet microphone video just because I thought it would be useful to hear clean, mid-gain, and distorted clips all mic'd like really accurately in the same position on yeah. the same cabinet. They've got in lasers it. that... that... They've got lasers <laughs> that are pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. I don't know. It just seemed like a good idea for folks out there that are either buying microphones for their cabinets or even if you're like trying to figure out what mic to use with your modeler. Yeah. Like, you know, this will work in a Helix. That's or, huge. Or, if you if you have a good reference point and you're dialing in something on your Helix, it's like, well, I don't know what a 121 sounds like versus a 57. This, I think, could end up being a good reference yeah, point absolutely like to know where to start or even like uh, a ribbon mic versus a uh, dynamic mic mm -hmm. versus a condenser mic seems like a good reference yeah because it uh, mics are like speakers and that they have a huge effect on the sound and, and what type of mic and where it's placed and like all huge that's massive effect yeah yeah it's such a big deal it's like an overall sonic stamp on the whole sound so uh we've come up with a really cool methodical way to go through and do this and let's get to it let's do it so here's our mic selection for today. What do we got here? We got a 421 from Sennheiser. This is a new Shure reissue. Tell me about that. It's this the, is a 545. So essentially it's a reissue of the old Unidyne 57s. So it's a precursor to the 57. Yes. And I haven't had a chance to try one of these yet. They're I'm fantastic. Super excited to hear it. Yeah, and then the standard 57. Yeah. Your M160 Biodynamic. This is the Shure 313 ripping microphone. And then a classic Royer 121. So these three are all, all your ribbons. ribbons. Yep, yep. And then an Audio Technica 4050. One of my favorites. Great microphone. And then this is a new Soyuz 1973. Okay. It's a condenser microphone. It's fantastic on guitar caps. All right, looking forward to hearing all of these. Excellent, thanks so much. Yeah, of course. So we knew we had to pick one mic position that would work well for all the microphones. And so we kind of chose the standard where the cap meets the cone position, maybe a little bit further out into the cone than that. And just like a half inch back from the grill cloth. And that was a good kind of baseline that seemed to work well with all the mics. And we kept it consistent using Sweetwater's awesome laser pointer thingy. I got Robbie and Cameron here from Contortionist. Robbie played a high gain clip a clean clip and I played a mid gain clip. You guys are playing through a Mesa, what's this one at? JP2C? JP2C, yeah. Right, on the clean and high gain channel. And I'm doing a 1987X over there for the mid gain clip. So Robbie and Cameron each set up a tone on the 2C and tracked a clip. I tracked using the Marshall. And at the same time as we were tracking those clips using a 57 on the cabinet, Sean from Sweetwater took a DI signal off our guitar into Pro Tools so that we could then reamp that DI signal out through the cabinet and capture the sounds of all the different mics. All right, so Macy DC. <laughs> All right, so first up, we're gonna hear 57, the classic. It's the standby, it's the fist, the hammer up the middle, the high mids, all that good stuff. Let's check it out. We're 
going to check out the 545 now. It's a reissue microphone that is basically the predecessor to the SM57. Uh, I'm really excited to see what it sounds like, so let's check it out. <laughs> We're gonna check out the Sennheiser 421, another legendary microphone. Let's see what it sounds like. Next up, we got the Royer 121, I believe, right, John? Yeah. 121, the classic. It's been around for a good solid 20 years now. Everybody loves them. Let's check it out. Right? Yeah, fire dynamic. Fire the classic, the Hendrix microphone. Actually, on the same speaker too that he used to prefer, I believe, a G12H, 55 hertz. Yeah. So this is this is the Hendrixy thing. We're not playing Hendrix, but let's check it out. <laughs> All right, next up we got the Shure 313. It's another ribbon microphone. I've seen these out on the road with folks like Slash. She uses them, I think. Yeah, as Marcus King I saw on the weekend had a bunch on a stage too, so they're popular. Yeah, hold up really well. Yeah, they must be durable for the yeah, road, right? They're made by made with a material called Roswellite, which is supposedly like an indestructible thing. So that's why they're ah. used a lot in the live situations. So. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Let's check it out. <laughs> Right? Yeah, Audio Technica. Audio Technica mic. This is one of my favorite mics that I've heard uh, on guitar cabs. I was touring opening for B-52s like 20 years ago, and the guy had two AC-30s in that band, and it sounded so good. I said, what's on those AC-30s? And he said, 4050s. I've been a fan ever since. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to check out the Soyuz mic. What's this one called? The 1973. 1973. Let's give it a listen. Okay, let's check out the clean clips now.
And now we're gonna hear the high gain dirty clips. <laughs> First up's 57? Yeah. Okay. Sounds like a 57. Sounds like a 57. <laughs> Sizzly. Yep. This is 545. <laughs> like the 57 what more even it's got more mids yeah yeah it seems to be a little more well-rounded and less kind of pokey yeah 421 that's why the 57 421 work well together yeah, they're just missing missing holes out. and yeah. stuff. It's all the mids. Yeah, tons of mids on those mics always. Okay. Rare. I mean, just warm, warm, really warm. Would blend quite well with that fifty-seven. Yep. I think so. Three thirteen, the sure of ribbon. That almost sounds like you blended a little 57 in with the 121. Yeah, that's what Jason said. Yeah. It sounds almost yeah. like a little bit a, tighter. Uh -huh. A ribbon with the 57. Yeah, yeah. like a sure ribbon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shocker. Yeah, it sounds like it would take EQ well, too. Yeah. yeah. I can see why guys use it a lot. 
So M160, so vintage style ribbon, small ribbon. <laughs> On this sound, it's got this weird, like, uh, like was it one K or something? Yeah, like sort of thing. It sounds like it's sort of upper mid or something. It needs to be. It it has a there's a low mid thing that works well depending on the part. I find that it's higher than like the Royer as far as like a ribbon deal. So uh, I like it sometimes, but that you know I've really a, liked them in the past. Yeah, it, things, it's but. definitely a different sonic signature than than the other ribbons. Yep. Uh, Audio Technica forty fifty. Balanced. Yeah. That's what I like about it. It's just all there. All right. And then the last is uh, Soyuz, 1973. Yeah. Sure. Don't want to pick a favorite. <laughs> I, mean, I know. That's <laughs> For that rad. sound. Yeah. 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 It's really, really, really good. It's got balance. Like if you got to use one mic, that's a killer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks good too. Yeah, which is the most important part. <laughs> really cool looking. All righty. All right. So a couple surprises. Um, as an internet guitar influencer, bleh, <laughs> I hate that title, but I guess it's part of what I am and what I do. I got influenced by my own video. And 15 minutes after uh, finishing making that video, I was in the store at Sweetwater buying a uh, Soyuz 1973 because <laughs> it just sounded so good. Uh, you know, you saw Sean look up from the console after listening to those, those kind of fly on the wall clips at the end there uh, when you're, you're watching us in our instant reaction. Um, he looks up from the console and says, you know, hate to pick a favorite. And we all heard it. We were all like, yeah, like it's just so balanced sounding and all there and just what I wanted to hear, you know, out of that tone. Uh, I had to buy one that day. Uh, so anyways, yeah, 15 minutes after finishing, I was, I was in the store and, and buying that microphone. So got influenced by my own video. The other uh, sort of surprise of the day, and it was really cool to hear, was the, the Shure 545. That's another mic I've never heard. Sounded a lot like a 57, but just didn't have the fizz or the, as much of the rizzy, fizzy, little rough stuff on the top end that a 57 can have. It was just a little warmer on the top end. Maybe that's why I said it had more mids in the video. Uh, might not be more mids, might just be a little bit rolled off on the top, I don't know. But anyways, it just sounded great, and I think I'm going to pick one of those up as well real soon. And there you have it. There it was. Bunch of microphones. I love this kind of stuff, man. I do too. I love, I, microphones are one of my favorite things, because yeah. they, like we said, it's, it has such an impact on how your instrument or how your amp comes across yeah. in the final mix, and you can kind of make one amp sound like a bunch of different amps depending on what mic you use and where it's placed and all that stuff. Absolutely. And it's kind of make or break to the tone, like making the right selection, yep. you know, is so important. Keep in mind, too, that a lot of people combine mics in the studio. If you can get the sound out of any one mic, it's a really great thing. But, you know, the, when you listen to this video, when you listen back to it, think about the sonic characteristics of each microphone and which one might blend with one of the other ones mm -hmm. really well because one might have something where the other one doesn't. So that's a really important And it also thing. depends on the sound and the part because on certain sounds like the 57, which is a like the industry standard you know guitar mic for a lot of things, works well, whereas on other sounds it's a little too harsh and brittle. It just depends on the context yep. of what you're doing and what you're playing. So, And we should keep in mind, too, that we did all of these in pretty much the exact same position, and sometimes something like a ribbon can benefit from being further back from the cabinet. Yeah, That gets into, like, if you're blending with other mics, you get into phase things and all kinds of stuff, but that's for another video. But just keep in mind that you can change the sonic thing quite a bit by moving around the microphone both back from the cabinet and where it is in front of the speaker in relation to the, the cone versus the cap and all that. Yeah, so 100%. This is, this is a good uh, starting point reference maybe yeah. uh, to get a good cross-section of different mics. Yeah, man. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> we'll see you later. Check out all the uh, mics down in the video description below as well. There's links to uh, all those microphones down there if you want more info on any of them. All right. Thanks, and thanks to Sweetwater for bringing us out here. It's been really fun. See ya. I'm at Sweetwater, so there's candy, and I've got this hot jawbreaker thing that was a problem. Fireball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, they got more here. They got more candy.